Welcome to Mix Made Clear, where we break down microinvasive glaucoma surgery into bite-sized chunks so you can walk away with a much greater understanding and feeling more mix confident. Today, in this part two video, we're going to talk about the mix classification of trabecular bypass stents. By the way, my name is Dr. Constance Okeke, and I'm an Ivy League, Wilmer I, and Baskin Palmer trained glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. This Mix Made Clear six-part video series is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from New World Medical, Nova Eye Medical, and Site Sciences. As we break down this class, we will first quickly review angle anatomy, then discuss the mechanism of action of this class, how the areas of resistance in the outflow system are affected, and then go into some detail on which available MIGS procedures are within this class. As we discuss each MIGS device, we'll go over its key features, the pros and cons, indications for usage, as well as contraindications to help with patient selection. So let's dive in. As an early MIGS adopter, I feel privileged to have been part of the evolution of the trabecular bypass stent devices. I clearly remember the first day I was introduced to the eye stent device at an American Glaucoma Society meeting. I had already adopted a trabectome agonio procedure, and I was really excited to add a new device with a different mechanism of action to my armamentarium. My intrigue eventually turned into being invited to be a clinical trial investigator for what is now iStent Inject, and I was one of the first in the country to put the FDA-approved iStent Inject device in my glaucoma patients. I was just as eager to onboard the Hydrus Microstent and have helped to train surgeons on all the bypass stents, so I'm really excited to get you up to speed as well. Lesson 1. Review of Angle Anatomy First, let's look quickly at the angle anatomy of the trabecular outflow system and the potential areas of resistance that affect it so that we can better understand the mechanism of action for this class of trabecular bypass stents. In the picture is a direct conioscopy view of the angle and the various structures that one should be able to identify. We did go over this in detail in the first MIGS Made Clear Part 1A video on goniotomy slash trabeculotomy. Please refer back to that video for more detail on angle anatomy if needed. So let's just name the key structures. There's Straubey's line, trabecular meshwork, scleral spur, and ciliary body band. The TM is probably the most important structure to be able to identify because this is the target structure engaged in trabecular bypass stenting. As a primary site of resistance in the trabecular outflow pathway, using a stent to bypass the TM area and divert aqueous humor past the clogged TM directly to Schlem's canal in the collector channels is a very beneficial mixed treatment option. While performing TM bypass procedures, it is of utmost importance to know and understand this angle and Anatomy to correctly perform the procedure, knowing what to target and what to avoid. If not properly positioned, the devices will not work effectively. Lesson 2. Understanding flow and obstruction of the outflow system. The outflow system consists of these key structures, the trabecular meshwork, the inner and outer wall, and lumen of Schlem's canal, and the collector channels. These are all the main areas where obstruction or damage can affect the outflow system. We also went over this in detail in the first MIGS Made Clear Part 1A video on goniotomy slash trabeculotomy. Please refer back to that video for more detail on the key structures of the outflow system if needed. At any point of the trabecular meshwork, the lumen or walls of Schlem's canal, or the collector channels, the tissue can either get clogged with debris or herniations, get fibrotic where the pores become really small and rigid, which limits the amount of flow of aqueous humor and results in an increase in resistance and elevated pressure. So you may be wondering, what is the mechanism of action in which you enhance the outflow system with the trabecular bypass stents? Well, with these micro stents, you pierce through the trabecular meshwork and insert the metallic device that seats directly into the lumen of Schlem's canal and allows for direct flow of aqueous humor from the anterior chamber to the collector channels. Up until recently, these procedures could only be done in conjunction with cataract surgery with CPT codes of 66991 or 66989 when the cataract is complicated. But now there is a microstent that can be done as a standalone procedure in mild, moderate, or severe refractory opening of glaucoma, and we'll share which one later in this video. Lesson 3. Mix devices in this class and how they work. Now let's go over the devices that utilize this trabecular bypass stent class. I stent, I stent inject, I stent infinite, and hydrous microstent. First up we have the I stent. This is the first generation of the I stent family and is still manufactured but not as widely used now that the second and third generation are available. What is unique about this device was that it was the very first of the microstents and is responsible for the coin term 
mix or microinvasive glaucoma surgery. It is designed as an L shape with a snorkel and lumen that provides aqueous direct access to the Schlem's canal when the device is seated in the proper position. The retention arches help to keep the one millimeter length stent in place after the tip pierces through the TM. All the eye stent first, second, and third generations are made out of heparin coated titanium and are considered MR conditional. What does that mean? It means that a patient with this device can safely be scanned in an MR system meeting usual standard conditions of static magnetic field of 3T or less. Here is the eye stent in surgical action where the insertion of the tip through the TM into Schlem's canal, then with the twisting of the wrist, the inserter reaches a perpendicular position, and then with depression of the inserter button, the device is released. In order to maximize the chance of outflow, targeting the insertion near a prominent episcleral vessel is ideal, so they can be marked prior and often correlate with areas of increased pigment in the TM. Due to some challenges in the learning curve of the insertion with the first generation stent and research showing more efficacy with higher numbers of stents placed, the second generation stent was developed. So next up, we have the eye stent inject and the Isen Inject W. Also still available, but being used less widely now that the third generation Isen Infinite is also available. The unique aspect of this device is that there are now two stents in one device and the shape dramatically changed to aid in a more straightforward insertion. The eye stent inject looks like a speck of dust on the finger and is designed like a mushroom with a flange that stays in the anterior chamber, a thorax that is lodged in the TM, and the head that resides in the Schlem's canal. The central inlet allows aqueous humor access through the central and side flow outlets that lead to the Schlem's canal. Due to the potential for over-implantation of the device, where it can get buried within the TM or beyond, a modification was made to increase the diameter of the flange, and a new name was given, Isten Inject W, for the wider flange. With two stents in each inserter, placement at least two clock hours apart increases access to more collector channels. Here is the Isten Inject W in surgical action, where there is alignment of the trocar to the central TM, then a forward dimpling of of the tip followed by pressing the inserter button to release the device which pierces through the TM into Schlem's canal and is seated, then pull back before releasing the inserter button. In order to maximize the chance of outflow, targeting the insertion near a prominent episcleral vessel or increased TM pigmentation is also ideal. The first generation iStent and iStent Inject W are all indicated for use in conjunction with cataract surgery for the reduction of intraocular pressure in adult patients with mild to moderate open angle glaucoma currently treated with ocular hypertensive medication. As research continued to show more efficacy with a higher number of stents placed, the third generation stent was developed. So next up we have the eye stent infinite. The unique aspect of this device is that there are three stents in one device though the shape of the individual stent is identical to the eye stent inject W. Another advantage is that this is the first micro stent that can be inserted as a standalone glaucoma procedure with a CPT code of 0671T and it can be done in conjunction with cataract surgery as well. With three stents in each inserter and the placement of at least two clock hours apart, which can span up to 180 degrees, this allows for even more access to more collector channels for enhanced outflow. It is indicated for use in adult patients with primary opening of glaucoma in whom previous medical and surgical treatments have failed. Here is the eye stent infant in surgical action, where there is alignment of the trocar to the central TM, and then a forward dimpling of the tip, followed by pressing of the inserter button to release the device, which pierces through the trabecular meshwork into Schlem's canal and is seated. A lever is pulled back to reload the inserter for the implantation of the next stent, and these steps here are repeated to the left and the right of the initial stent. In order to try to maximize the chance of outflow, targeting the insertion stents of at least two clock hours or more apart is ideal. Then next, we have the Hydrus Microstent, which is roughly the size of an eyelash, and it's unique in its design being the only MIGS implant to span approximately 90 degrees of the Schlem's Canal. This ensures access to collector channels in the nasal region. It is also uniquely designed with an open window scaffold to also dilate Schlem's Canal. It can also break up adhesions and provide outflow pathways for aqueous without obstructing the collector channels. Another feature, the aqueous inlet, helps a direct flow from the AC to the Schlem's Canal 
bypassing the trabecular meshwork. The device is made of nitinol, which is a highly flexible and biocompatible and also MR conditional, which is similar to the iStem family of devices. One, however, does need to avoid implanting the device in people with known nickel allergies. Like the first and second generation iStents, Hydrus Microstent is also indicated for the reduction of intraocular pressure in adult patients with mild to moderate primary open angle glaucoma in conjunction with cataract surgery with the same CPT codes. It is not available in the U.S. as a standalone device. Here is the Hydrus Microstent in surgical action. After making a small incision to create a goniotomy for entry, the Hydrus stent is inserted into Schlem's canal past the TM until it's well inserted at the tip. Then the wheel of the inserter is dialed to implant the hydrus into the nasal quadrant of the Schlem's canal. Then the inserter is removed. The implant can be nudged into position if needed with a Sinsky hook. We have discussed the indications for these devices. Now, in regards to the main contraindications for any MIGS devices, this includes a poor corneal view of the angle of structures on gonioscopy. In the eye stent family of devices, there is a contraindication in pediatric patients less than 18 years of age and eyes with primary or secondary angle closure glaucoma, traumatic, malignant, or uveitic glaucoma, as well as neovascular glaucoma and in patients with discernible congenital anomalies of the anterior chamber angle. Also, retrobulbar tumor, thyroid eye disease, or Sturge-Weber syndrome, or any other type of condition that may cause elevated episclerovenous venous pressure is also a contraindication. For the hydrus microstent, there is similarly a contraindication in eyes with angle closure glaucoma and in eyes with secondary glaucoma such as neovascular or uveitic glaucoma and in pediatric patients. But uniquely, there is also the contraindication in patients with a known nickel allergy. All right, so to recap, today we broke down the class of trabecular bypass stents, diving into angle anatomy, how these devices improve outflow by bypassing resistance points in the trabecular meshwork, and exploring the key devices, iStent, iStent Inject, iStent Inject W, iStent Infinite, and Hydrus Micro Stent. Each of these devices offer unique features and understanding when and how to use them can truly enhance the management of open angle glaucoma. Before we wrap up, here's what I'd like you to do next to get the most out of the series. First, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos in the series. We've got a lot of valuable content coming up that you won't want to miss. Next, if you know other eye care providers who would benefit from the series, share the video with them. Let's spread the knowledge and help more people feel confident about MIGS. While you're waiting for the series to start, I've got some resources for you. Check out my free report, Survey Insights, on understanding the top challenges surgeons face when adopting a new MIGS procedure. You'll find the link in the description box below. This guide is an excellent reference to help you prepare for your journey of adopting a new MIGS procedure so you have a better understanding of the expectations. And if you're still wondering how well does MIGS even work and what does a good MIGS outcome look like, well, take a look at this guide in the description box as well. Real Life MIGS Success, 15 Clinical Vignettes Showcasing Successful Outcomes. This will give you a solid understanding of the effectiveness and benefits of these procedures so you can build on momentum to start taking action yourself towards getting these types of results. Additionally, if you want to better understand glaucoma and how to maintain healthy vision, consider getting a copy of the Glaucoma Guidebook, Expert Advice on Maintaining Healthy Vision. I wrote this multi-award winning Johns Hopkins Health book that, that empowers patients to protect their eye health through education and taking action. And for those who want a sneak peek of what's to come in our series, download MIGS Made Clear 101, a primer on microinvasive glaucoma surgery. This primer discusses basic angle anatomy, the outflow system, and briefly covers the various MIGS mechanisms of action we will discuss in detail in this series. You can find the link in the description box below. So whether you're dealing with mild to moderate adult glaucoma with visually significant cataracts or refractory glaucoma, these trabecular bypass stent options provide a range of tools to tailor treatments to your patient's needs. Remember, patient selection is crucial and knowing the contraindications will help you avoid complications. I hope this video breakdown helped to clarify this class of mix procedures and gave you a solid foundation to feel more confident in choosing the right device or devices for your practice. Let us know how we're doing in the comments and ask any questions that you have. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will be discussing viscodilation devices and continuing to make mix clear one step at a time.